one of my goals here at New Perspectives Music is to eventually make like literally every part of the guitar here in-house from sustainable, reclaimed, and locally sourced materials. I've recently made a huge step towards that by starting to make my own pickups. And um, I'm a total noob at this, I have a ton to learn, but today I'm gonna show you a little bit of my first experiment and my first sort of outside of the box pickup design. I wanna introduce you to the Humbucker PAF. And of course, PAF stands for Palette As. Fortunately, there is a ton of information on the internet about how to make pickups. And there are a lot of uh, places where you can actually find the recipes and the wires and the, the materials and the magnets and stuff that they use and all sorts of your favorite classic pickups that are out there so you can easily recreate them but i don't want to recreate pickups that are already made i want to make my own pickups so i've messed around and i've made a couple uh starting to understand some of the things that happen and why it happens and how it works and so now it's time for me to start uh seeing if i can find my own voice in the world of pickups by making the pafs <laughs> so oh no if you don't get the reference, uh, Gibson humbuckers from back in the day, uh, some of the most sought after pickups and most replicated pickups still to this day, um, are referred to a lot of times as PAFs, which stands for Patent Applied For. And of course, that also works out for a different actor and palette as. <laughs> <laughs> fill in the blank so i thought that'd be fun to do and um i'm actually believe it or not even though i'm doing this really crazy thing now where i'm saving nails and pallet wood to make my pickups uh i am making a little bit of a nod to the pafs you can see here this is what the pickup looks like with its chrome cover on but underneath you'll notice that it has six poles on one half of the humbucker and the other half has screws and so i thought i would use the nails from the pickups instead of the screws do the same poles use the same wire and the same amount of winds as the originals and uh, and then put it together using all pallet wood and closet doors of course because you know holocore doors of the new pallet um, as my materials uh, traditionally they would be on a metal base with a magnet down there and there's you know blah 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 some braided wiring and all that stuff but I'm doing it using as much reclaimed material as possible. So I did buy these Alnico 5 poles and I bought some Alnico 5 bar magnets to put at the bottom of it, but then I'm using the pallet wood and the closet doors to make my flat work as they call it and bobbins and whatnot. Uh, and I did buy new uh, 42 gauge copper wire to wrap around them, but then all the other wires I'm gonna use and all these other parts are, you know, the nails and whatnot. Um, so it's an experiment to see uh, what it'll sound like or if it'll even work for that matter. <laughs> The first problem I'm having is uh, keeping the nails in, in nice and straight and whatnot. So I'm using this uh, electrical tape, basically. It's like a cloth tape that you need to insulate the magnets inside the pole from the copper wires I'm going to wrap around them because if they touch it, it won't work right. Um, and so I'm trying to use that and some other tape to make everything sit in place. Um, it's easy with the Elnico 5 poles, but the nails are tricky. They're a little bent. A little, little, little frustrating, but... Uh, so I got them to where I think they're going to work, and I added a little dab of Starbond CA glue to just sort of hold them in place a little bit. And uh, then I let it sit for a little while. Let's take a minute to very basically explain how a pickup works. So we start with, we have these metal poles, in this case one for each string that go up underneath the guitar strings, and we build this little bobbin that's insulated like I discussed to then take our, we'll pretend this is our copper wire, and we're going to wrap this copper wire around this bobbin, just like that, but like a lot, like eight to 10,000 times. Uh, the beginning line where it first goes in is your positive, and then the out one, the last one is the negative. We connect those to our guitar and voila, we have an electromagnet. When we plug it in, we move the metal strings over the metal poles and the poles kind of here, or however you want to describe it, translate that into sound and that's it. But what we're making today is a humbucker. So we actually have two of these and they're both identical. Whereas the wire goes in and that's the positive and it comes out to the negative. But now what we do is we connect the negative from the first coil to the positive of the second coil, run that signal all the way through. And what this does is these two electromagnets next to each other are less susceptible to picking up noise and interference and whatnot, um, hums in other words. And so they, they buck hums you know buck the hums but of course we can get much much more complicated with this uh there's all sorts of different ways we can put these pickups together just the number of wines can make a difference the thickness of the copper wire the types of magnets that you use whether it's alnico 3 or alnico 5 uh the sky's the limit and so a lot of electric guitar makers can really hone in on creating their own tone uh, by creating their own pickups whereas tone wood <laughs> well i think a lot of you know my feelings about that for electric guitars I decided to reinforce the top pallet wood trim ring with a piece of holocore door in case it wanted to splinter and also to just make it a little bit 
higher and thicker. Uh, but so now we'll get to the actual winding. And there you can see I'm using 42 gauge wire that I'm putting on the floor. And this is sort of the standard way to do this. And then bringing up to the pickup winder. I want to talk a minute about this winder. This is the Dove Canyon DCS pickup winder, and I'm going to leave a link. Uh, I got this on eBay, and he also sells them on Reverb uh, for $200, which is an incredible deal for uh, what this machine can do in comparison to other pickup winding machines. Uh, I've actually told the guy how awesome it was. He's another just maker dude like us out there making stuff. Uh, and so if you are interested in getting into winding your own pickups, I'd highly recommend going to Dove Canyon Studios DCS and uh and supporting his business and his machine so this is not sponsored by the way i paid full price for it but um what you can see i'm doing right now is i'm just i centered my pickup on the spinning wheel and then i move those two little nuts by my finger back and forth to get just the right width so i would wrap the copper wire in between the top and bottom of my pickup uh it took a minute to do that but then once you have it you're pretty much set until you change your thing and i'm using some two-sided mounting tape in this case because of the nails um, but usually i would just use a regular two-sided tape and then once i've done that i can then go in and solder some leads on and check to see if there's some resistance which i can see is about right for this and uh, then move on to the next half which i'm doing now so now that we talked about the pickup winder here you can see me putting this other half on i'm using two-sided tape and i used my uh, duresta ice pick to help me center it onto the the wheel and then you can see i move and adjust those nuts to get it all lined up right i went oh, I was a little too far and i had to back up a couple lines and i just do that very carefully to make sure i'm getting full coverage back and forth between the top and bottom of the bobbin now once i get it i can just go and um and just go back and forth but i do stop every once in a while to check and make sure i'm not getting too thick on one side i'm just moving my hand back and forth between those two stops to just evenly distribute the wire it's called scatter winding i think is what the people call it um and so for this particular pickup i'm doing it five thousand times for each coil you see i'm slowing it down to check and make sure everything looks good before i finish and uh and then i have to solder my leads onto these little couplers and there is remember on that copper wire a thin coating so you need to either scratch that off with your fingertip or i found i can almost just sort of melt it away um, to connect it to the other wire otherwise you won't get contact now this is just a little quick tool i bought at the box store that helps you detect magnetism and which side is north and which side is south because you do want to pay attention to that stuff with a humbucker pickup you're going to have one side of it being north and one side being south it's just sort of the way they happen but this is just this little jury-rigged uh, magnetizer I have because when you buy these on the cope holes, they usually do not come magnetized, um, which just makes it easier so you can put them in without them all sticking to each other and stuff. And then you magnetize them later. And there you can see I did about 20 passes to do that. Now the nails, I tried magnetizing that way and they wouldn't take, but that's okay because I'm going to be connecting a magnet to them on the bottom there after I smoothed out the bottoms to make them all the right height. I've said this many times because I'm kind of becoming an expert on them. Not all holocore doors are created equal. Um, this is what most of them seem to be, at least in my area, is uh, this type of plywood, which is like a Luan. It's a, usually th three layers, you can see, uh, of this sort of splintery, sort of mahogany-like wood. I think it's better looking, but it's nowhere near as hard or as durable as this one, which is, um, you know, probably birch. Uh, like a birch plywood and again it's three layers but this is like a little bit thicker and a little bit harder and before i had used the luan to make some of these bottom pieces but um i was having some issues with it actually like catching the wires and stuff and not being and then breaking a little bit when i put these little um couplers in to solder the wire too uh so i made some new ones out of that better uh birch and this is like this is something i can work with now so now I made a few adjustments to my files and to the materials as I just described, and I am making my now second set of PAFs. Um, this one going together a little bit smoother, a little bit better, but still not perfect. I was trying some different placement for where I would attach the wire, the leads on the bottom of the pickup, and trying the best way to mount the pickup into the trim ring. So here I have two pieces of closet door that I glued together with a nut inside. And then on this one, I just tried gluing just a nut to the base. And then I also, you know, have to put these magnets on in the middle. Here you can see, and I realized that having the, the wires sort of in the center of the bobbin runs the risk of, like I have them there, runs the risk of touching the magnets. So I, I moved those to the outer for future things to the outer corners and then i'm gluing these little spacers so i can sort of put this whole bottom together and it's a little bit 
this is the part that I was the most unhappy with is it was a little uh, sloppy. These are the bass pickups here. Um, and I'm professional, so I need to figure out a better way to get this all together. The hot glue wasn't even enough, and there was some things. And I, what I basically came up with is that I need to sort of set the bobbins up a little bit cleaner to begin with, uh, and then I should be more even because they weren't perfectly even. And then once I have all that done, uh, this is just some paraffin wax that I had heated up, and I potted them, they call it, and you just basically let it sit in the, the hot wax for a few minutes to get it into all the crevices. Nothing rattles around in there. I cleaned it off the top, and we get to hear it for the first time. You can see here that, like, this pickup, you know, I have this, this Alnico 5 magnet in the bottom, and you can see on this pickup here that we've got our north poles here, and then these aren't reading right now. If I add a stronger magnet to the, to the back of it, I can get... I can get that reading. You see, it was just there, there in the middle. And then this one here... We have readings all the way across. So this one's probably gonna work better than that one on the nail side. And what I need to do is increase the magnetism uh, in here to get the nail side to work better. That's what I believe is happening. Learning as I go. The volume on the nail side is much, much quieter than the other side. Right now that's just the nail side. And then if we go to just the other side. It's a little bit louder. Which is to be expected. With that weird Russian test guitar setup in my little kind of garbage uh, combo amp that I have here in the shop, I was able to test those pickups and see that they are working. And I can also see, because I wrapped them as two separate coils, that the nail side is not quite as hot as the regular pole pickup side, which is not surprising at all. But they are working. We just haven't really fully got to hear them yet. Those pickups are going to go in these two guitars I'm working on. And I'm not making a video about these guitars, but when I'm done uh, with them and I have the pickups and I'm working, I'll put something together so we can hear them. Uh, but you saw that I also made a set of bass pickups, and that that bass is also not done, but it's done enough that we can hear it a little bit right now. Well, that was very interesting and enlightening. And uh, what I found is that when it's in humbucker mode, the, the nail side is, you know, as expected, almost like dead weight. It's not quite carrying the, the punch that I was hoping it would. But when you flip to the single coil side, it sounded fantastic, of course, because it's, that's pretty much the way pickups are made. So I have some ideas for how I can boost the nail side that I'm gonna try in future versions. I do have this one set that I made after making all of these other pickups um, that are 
probably the best looking. Uh, we got a 7.68K for the neck and 9.1K for the bridge. And this one actually has, uh, on the nail poles, it has 43 gauge wire because I ran out of 42. So that's interesting. I don't know what that's going to mean. And um, I might put these up in my store for any brave souls that want to <laughs> mess around with these. And if not, they'll go into a future build of mine as I continue to experiment and grow with this plan. Now I have some other single coil pickups I have to make for another guitar. So I might have another go at this and try my idea to see if I can make these nail, the nail half stronger and better. We're getting there. Um, you know, I love experimenting with stuff like this and I like sharing it with you. Most of you seem to have a good time uh, watching this stuff with me. I know some people get pretty upset with my, <laughs> with my nonsense, but that's okay. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this and uh, thanks for sharing the journey with me. Be good.